<laughs> He's not going to put that in the video, you know that. <laughs> <laughs>So it will be about 621,821. Yeah, exactly. That's how it normally goes. What inspired you to start your channel? Tell us about your first video. Okay, so <laughs> the first video is an absolute journey. I guess what inspired us to start the channel is that we saw... We were living and working in a culture where the media was telling us a narrative that we thought didn't reflect what was actually happening with society at that moment in time. And that was due to Brexit. It was in 2018. And we were fed the narrative that Brexit happened because of old racist white people. And we thought that there was something a little bit more complex and interesting happening. Yeah, uh, that's exactly it. And um, we wanted to create some kind of alternative to the way that conversations were being had uh, and uh, using our comedic background to keep the interviews, uh, you know, ticking along. And, you know, if it gets into some kind of rut, we can always pick it back up with a joke here and there. So uh, that's how we started it. So the first video we did was an interview with the guy who's the chief lead writer for the Financial Times. So it was a big opportunity for us. He was one of the very few connections we had in the kind of media world. Uh, so we got him along. He came in into this room below a pub or basically th the floor of a comedy <laughs> club. And then 20 minutes into the interview, um, a car horn started beeping outside really loudly uh. When I when I went out to investigate, I, I basically, to cut the long story short, I found a woman who was trying to attach one of those anti-theft devices to the wheel of her car, to the steering wheel of her car, but she kept pressing the horn thing. Uh. And, and when I asked her if she needed any help or something, she got really upset. And then her two parents emerged from somewhere. They also got really upset with me for basically asking what's going on and chased me back into the comedy club. <laughs> Uh, where we were recording, I managed to shut the door in time. Uh, but little did I know that then they made a formal complaint to the comedy club where we were recording, uh, who were not very happy. And that was our first ever video. We nearly got kicked out from the studio we were using on day one, which preceded several other incidents in which we did get kicked out of the studios in which we were recording. And look, and uh, it's important to remember that from day one, we were pissing off literally everybody that we were encountering. What strategies did you use to grow your subscriber count from zero to a thousand? What about from a thousand to where you are now? We always, I think one of the most important things that you can do, well, for us with an interview show is to get people on who are genuinely interesting, people who you want to have a conversation with. People have got a big audience, you mean? Yes, that's, yeah, basically as well. Yes. So that combination, you want someone with an audience who's interesting, I yeah. may actually say something that is a little bit provocative that will get people talking. How important are thumbnails and video tiles? How do you decide on these? Uh, so they're super important. We have a guy whose only job pretty much is to make thumbnails for us. And in terms of the text and the title, that's a like a process that with us now involves about four or five different people you know, coming up with ideas, giving opinions, we throw them around, we work out what we think. Uh, and we, we, you know, we're trying to give an accurate reflection of the content of the video, but also <laughs> make sure that it's the sort of thing that's likely to get picked up by the algorithm. So, so that people know it's going to be interesting to them. Uh, so it's kind of a, an ongoing process and nobody really knows how it works. So it's, a, it's all very much uh, uh trial and error really, uh, but they're both super, super important. They are indeed, but always remember, the bigger the guest, the easier it is to create a thumbnail which people are going to click on. For instance, if you did a uh, an interview with 
who can I say? Let's say you were doing a two-way interview with Donald Trump and Russell Brand. Your thumbnail ain't going to need to be that good because everybody's going to want to watch that. Were there any specific videos or moments that significantly boosted your channel's popularity? Oh, yeah. absolutely. So early on, it was interviewing one of the bigger guests that we, we had at the time. Uh, a couple of them actually in a row, but one. So we interviewed a an evolutionary psychologist called Diana Fleischman, who was mm -hmm. who who did very well. Um, and then we interviewed a a guy who had a massive YouTube channel already, and he brought a lot of his audience over um, uh, by basically putting a clip on his channel, sending the people over to us to subscribe, etc. Uh, so that was one of them. I think the pandemic was a massive, you know, it wasn't a single event, but the pandemic was a massive boost for us uh, as well because, you know, people were had less to do and there was a lot of very contentious stuff going on. Uh, so us commenting on it and interviewing people about it made a big difference as well. It was. And also, I would say one of the most important things that you can do when you have a channel is be authentic. Produce a kind of content that you would want to watch. One of the biggest mistakes that people make, not only YouTubers, but I think anyone who produces content, stand-up comedians. I saw a lot of comedians make this mistake. They produce comedy that they thought others would want to watch. Mm. And if you aren't going to want to watch your content, then that says a lot about your content. Yeah. You've got to want to watch what you produce. And if you don't, you're going somewhere very wrong. Yeah. Absolutely. What is your monetization strategy? So we monetize the videos. Uh, we sell our own advertising that we place on the videos. We record mm -hmm. uh, comedy ads, basically, that go in, into the videos. We also do live shows, which pr produce super chats, and also people can uh, can uh, use channel memberships uh, to pay for it as well. We also have non-YouTube sources of revenue as well that, that we use. Yeah, it's really important when you have a YouTube channel that you aren't wholly reliant on one stream of income because for a variety of different reasons, that stream of income can ebb and flow and you need to make sure, particularly if you want this to be a viable business, that you have multiple streams. You can't just rely on one stream of income. What do you believe is the key to building a loyal and engaged subscriber base? Integrity. One of my favorite, sorry, what were we going to say? You know, I was going to say integrity. If people think that you're real and that you're honest, they will follow you and they will engage with you, even if they disagree with you. But if you, if you are disingenuous, if you are somebody who comes across as lacking integrity, it doesn't matter what your content is like. People won't get, people may watch the odd video, but they won't follow you and they won't they won't love what you do because they'll feel that there's something lacking. Yeah, my favorite quote on this is the most important thing in show business is authenticity. Once you can fake that, you can do anything. <laughs> and it's kind of this the authenticity is the currency of the internet. If you if people feel that you are being yourself, they will flock to that. And actually I would say that for Francis and I both it, the process of doing what we do for nearly six years now or five and a half at least has been really fundamentally about stripping away all the layers and being more of ourselves and so our personalities on screen have come closer and closer to who we really are in real life um and that i think is is, is the most important thing if you do something that is authentic to you there will be an audience of people out there who are interested in it yeah, and you've got, it's like, you know, when I see people, uh, you know, I, I like to watch other people do what we do because you know, I do it for research, but also as well, it's always good to be looking at your own practice. And I come back to this again and again. When you ask questions, if you ask a question that you are genuinely interested in, the conversation, 99 times out of 100, will be way more interesting than yeah. by asking the question, that you think you should ask or by trying to appear clever because you're not going to fool everyone. How do you handle criticism and negative comments on your videos? You know, when you have a small channel, I actually really recommend that people read all the comments, including the negative mm -hmm. ones. 
Now, it doesn't mean you take them all seriously, of course, because it's the internet. People are going to put a lot of stupid stuff in there. But when you have a small channel, the people who engage with you are much more likely to, to have something useful to say uh, because there's not a lot of them. So they feel like they're part of a small community. The sort of stuff that people will say on a big YouTube channel is different. Um, but also, as the great man Joseph Stalin said, quantity has a quality all of its own. And so really, once you have a big YouTube channel, you kind of have to stop reading the comments, really, because there's just so much toxic crap that you're going to get whatever you do. You know, mm. I've seen like fishing channels where the guy's like getting dunked on by people who thinks he's fishing wrong and stuff. It's just like there's a lot of toxic, angry people on the Internet. And of course, in our space, which is culture and politics, the, there's an added element, which is there's people who absolutely hate you because of who you are. Um so, yeah, I think I used to listen to people who said, don't read the comments. And I'd be like, come on, read, you've got to read the comments. They're useful. And they are when you have a small channel. But as the channel gets bigger, you have to realize that it's not, it's not good for you. Although sometimes the comments can be very funny. I remember one comment said about me that I, this man reminds me of Louis Theroux with brain damage. Yeah. There's a lot of funny comments, but they're more likely to be funny in that way than in an actual ha ha, that's funny kind of way. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Can you share a memorable fan interaction with us? Yeah, we we flew over to New York for one of our America trips mm. um, and uh, we were standing in the queue uh, discussing, there was four of us, uh, me, Francis and our two producers. Um, and uh, we were talking about some like high, pretty, you know, inside the business discussions about what we were going to do, where we were going to go, like talking about people that we know that other people might, you know, stuff like that. Um, and we were in this queue for about an hour and a half. So we had the chance to like discuss literally everything. Um, and then when it was the, everybody's turn to go to passport control, the guys went ahead and I was the only one left in the queue. And the moment they left, the guy behind us stood behind us this entire hour and a half said, love your show, by the way. <laughs> I remember that. I remember um, uh, there, there's been so many. It, it's always, uh, yeah, it's always really funny and it's always very sweet. Um, there, there have been moments where, you know, I, I, I was talking to somebody who's a fan and then you go and order a coffee, for example. And then the the person behind the counter will be like, oh, that person paid for your coffee. And that's a really nice thing. Who doesn't love free coffee? What advice do you have for creators who want to grow their YouTube channels? Um, look, it, it's the usual obvious stuff. Work really hard. Be consistent. Uh, don't give up at the beginning because it's hard. It's very, very hard at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely brutal. Um, if you're doing something that's genuinely authentic, uh, and that is really true and you believe in it and something you want to do, you've got to give it some time. I'm not saying everybody always will succeed, but if you, you have to give it enough time, we could, if we had the mindset of just like, Oh, we'll just try a few episodes and see what happens. We never would have got to where we were going to go. We always thought this, this, this was going to be successful, but we also knew that it was going to take time. So uh, don't, don't, don't be, be work hard, be consistent, and don't get too despondent at the beginning when things aren't going the way you were hoping. And also, and most importantly, have fun. There is nothing more attractive than watching somebody who is having fun. Just have fun. Enjoy what you're doing, because if you don't enjoy it, there's no point in doing it. You've got to love what you do, particularly with this.